On Overdrive today, we learn to handle some iconic sports cars at BIC, get a look inside Tata Motors Pune crash test facility and feast our eyes on some exotic automobiles at the Oberoi Concourse d'Elegance. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I am Soini Dutt. Let's start the show with some of the most iconic sports cars in the world. From mastering a slalom course in the Porsche 911 Turbo S to also drifting in the Cayman GT4 RS, Rohit couldn't have asked for a better day in office. In fact, he made the BIC track his office for an entire day. Here's a look at the Porsche track day experience right here in India. Porsche's engineering prowess truly stands out and the Porsche experience events are designed to help you learn, appreciate and leverage this edge. These events include driving and training on various terrains, sand, snow and notably racetracks. Porsche track experience tailored to different skill levels ranges from 1 to 3 days. We had the privilege of participating in a one-day program specifically crafted for India. We are talking about machines like the 911. The experience begins with understanding what separates a sports car from a standard car. It's not just about the shape, the power or the speed, but also about the nuances like the pedal design. The accelerator pedal, for example, is positioned and shaped quite differently in a sports car. Wearing bulky shoes might lead you to inadvertently press the throttle when attempting to brake. And guess what? Despite knowing this and driving sports cars almost every month, I still made the mistake a few times when tackling my first driving exercise for the day, an autocross course. Pulling some slaloms today. This course is to sharpen reflexes and introduce the handling differences between various sports car models like the red 911S Cabriolet and the grey 911 Turbo S Coupe that you see here. A convertible, this is a hard top, will have slightly better rigidity than that car. Of course, not something that I'm going to understand with a small slalom. That's just me being a little nerdy here. The turbo was obviously much quicker of the mark and with its rear wheel steering, much more agile too. So the instructor is pretty impressed with the rest of the lap that I did. It was only the braking. I think I braked a little too early. So that is something that I need to work on now because this is going to be the time lap. They're throwing in some competition. Wish me luck guys! Wish me luck! My focus was on precise braking during the timed lap. Not too early to be cautious, nor too late to lose control. My accuracy paid off, earning me the quickest time in my group. Next, I was in the K1 GT4 RS, a car that stole my heart last year. The goal? To master going sideways. Drifting! Remember how the last part of that activity felt? Right. Where you had the lock yes. and then you, you, you just came out the throttle and the car went straight. At that yes. point, I need you to add another bullet okay. for the car then to change direction right. and come straight into oversteer. And then once okay. you've done that, blip, blip, through the gate. Okay. okay so and look here. These drift drills, though introductory, are a foretaste of the more advanced training available in the global Porsche experience programs. Nice and slowly. Okay, turn hard, harder, 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 gas. Gas, gas, gas. Straight, 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 straight. Okay, that's it. Good. Okay. We're going to go straight for exercise two. Oh, You've okay, got sorry. one dialed in. I like that a lot. 
After lunchtime, they spoke the language of apexes, breaking points, and throttle control, a language that every participant grows to understand and appreciate, especially when you can apply all of this with your own Porsche or by renting one from Porsche's latest range. In our case, we had a bunch of Taycans, the K1 GT4 RS, and the very, very exclusive 911 GT3 RS. As the day draws to a close on any Porsche experience event, there's a sense of fulfillment. Skills sharpened, limits reached, and for many, a dream realized. The Porsche track experience is more than just a day at the track. It's a journey towards a deeper understanding of what it means to drive a Porsche. It lets you experience firsthand the marriage of engineering and emotion that is the essence of this brand. And once you pick the pulse of the heartbeat, you can make these incredible Porsche machines truly come alive. You feasted your eyes on some of the fastest sports cars, but on the other side of this break, we take you through Tata Motors' crash test facility in Pune to find out just how they manage those five-star ratings. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Now, Tata Motors is upping their game in the safety department big time. They are crash testing their cars at Tata's Pune crash test facility. Now, Kranti Sambhav got us an insight into what goes into making some of the safest cars in India. Have you ever wondered how safe your car truly is? If so, then you've likely heard about the NCAP star ratings, a topic of discussion among both Indian customers and manufacturers. Those dramatic slow motion videos of cars crashing into walls are part of NCAPS, a program that assesses new car safety. Based on how cars handle the forces during a crash, they receive a star rating. Today, we are taking you behind the scenes of a live crash test at Tata Motors Lab to see what goes on. Interesting case study how your corporate vision can turn into your brand if you keep at it, keep working on it over the years and this is what safety is for Tata Motors. Right now we are at Tata Motors crash test facility and we are going to watch this live crash testing of Tata Safari at this uh, facility. We'll also try and understand what kind of mechanism uh, goes behind this whole uh, testing, what are different areas, uh, what are the preparations, how these dummies work and how exclusive are they and, and how do you capture this crash which lasts for maybe a couple of milliseconds. Independent agencies like Global NCAP and our own Bharat NCAP conduct these tests in state-of-the-art facilities. High-speed cameras capture every detail and cars are awarded points based on their performance in three key areas. Adult Occupant Protection, AOP, Child Occupant Protection, COP, and Safety Assist Technologies. Bharat NCAP assigns star ratings from 1 to 5, with 5 being the highest. To achieve a 5-star rating, manufacturers like Tata Motors strive for the highest possible points in each category. For example, a 5-star rating in Adult Occupant Safety requires a score between 27 and 32, while a 5-star rating in Child Safety requires a score between 41 and 49. So this Tata Safari is going to be crash tested today in front of our eyes and before we do that, before this uh, car is all crumpled up. Uh, let's take a look at the settings where uh, crash test is going to happen. First of all, uh, this uh, barrier, uh, which is uh, looking metallic uh, from outside, it has this concrete wall behind it. And then this uh, uh, rig, which has this blue uh, attachment. This represents uh, another car coming from opposite direction and uh, this test will be called offset frontal uh, crash test. So you can see the dummy inside and uh, child seats. This is also fitted with five high-speed cameras on the inside and ten high-speed cameras on the outside. Dummies are crucial to these tests and their cost reflects their complexity. Each dummy can cost around 2.5 crore rupees depending on the number of sensors it carries. 
integral part of any crashes are these dummies and uh, you can see different size, different shapes of uh, these dummies and very interesting thing about uh, these dummies is that they were expensive 2.3 to 2.5 crores and uh, they are fitted with almost 42 sensors. You can see these wires uh, going from head uh, towards uh, the back and then uh, to the sensor and then uh, you have sensors in the hands and legs and uh, you have uh, a dummy for 1.5 year olds also. You must be wondering why these dummies are so expensive. So the reason uh, is these sensors. They are uh, high precision machines and calibrated for uh, impact up to 100 G within 3 to 4 milliseconds and uh, these are the sensors which are fitted in different parts of these dummies. For different tests you have different kind of uh, dummies. For example this is for uh, side crash tests and the sensors are fitted in a very different manner. They need to be stored in a very specific temperature and humidity zone which has to be between 18 degrees to 22 degrees and humidity should be below 70 percent. While the actual crash test only lasts a few seconds, extensive preparation takes 3 to 5 days. You might be wondering how many crash tests happen before a car launch. The answer might surprise you. Before reaching the crash test stage, numerous simulated and physical tests are conducted. This lab includes a servo acceleration sled test facility as well. Here engineers use simulators and rigs to create crash-like scenarios, testing everything from seats and harnesses to dashboard materials and infotainment systems, ensuring they don't cause injuries during an actual crash. Only after these rigorous simulations are cars finally taken for the real crash test. Last year alone, Tata Motors conducted nearly 150 real crash tests, highlighting their commitment to safety. After understanding the entire process, we can imagine the thousands of simulator tests, calibrations and modifications happening behind these real tests. All with the goal of achieving higher scores and the 5-star rating. After this very short break, it's time for us to switch gears and also step back in time to see some of the rarest cars that were showcased at the overall Concourse d'Elegance in Udaipur recently. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. You cannot put a price on beauty. That's the first thing that comes to mind as I walk across the beautiful Oberoi Udevilas in Udaipur, nestled against the majestic Lake Pichola towards some of the rarest and priceless automobiles in India. A special occasion deserves special celebrations, right? The Oberoi Group, founded in 1934, celebrates 90 years of impeccable hospitality, not only in India but across the globe. So what better way to celebrate this milestone than amongst these gorgeous vintage and classic cars restored impeccably and they tell us a tale of a beautiful era gone by. I think it's a celebration of our history, it's 90 years. Some of these cars are more than 100 years old, but these are really very, very special cars and our history equally reflects uh, many periods when the company went through many uh, ups and downs and today we're here in a position really to, to, uh, to enjoy that and we've come a long way, so why not do a nice show like this? India's rich and varied love affair with automobiles of the bygone era can be seen in the stunningly curated Oberoi Concourse d'Elegance with cars ranging from the pre- and post-war eras spanning across models built in America, Europe, Italy as well as our very own country. For any car enthusiast, this is one of the most prestigious competitions to participate in, with globally renowned and distinguished judges ranging from auto historians, collectors, motorsport legends and even the British royal family called in to scrutinise the automobiles on various parameters. We are surrounded about all sorts of cars here. Also the Rolls Royces and the Bentley of the Maharajas in this time. But I have been amazed by the quality of the restoration of those cars. Here you have all the qualities to compete with Pepper Beach, Villa Destes and others. 
I'm standing with the oldest show car here at the Oberoi Concourse. This is a 104-year-old Packard limousine, which was popular for making the very first production V12 engine. Now, this car is said to have impressed as well as inspired Enzo Ferrari to make his very own V12 years later. This Packard 7 Twin 6 335 is a long wheelbase variant that could ferry seven passengers and is believed to be the very first American V12 to come to India. This car was brought back to its original shape in 2018 and is now owned by Amal Tanna, founder of Rolling Art. Our very own Indian royals' love affair with cars can be seen in this spectacular category dedicated to limousines, saloons and a drop-head coupe, a Rolls-Royce previously owned by the late Maharaja of Mysore. There is one category at the concourse designed to take Indians down memory lane and that is the motoring for the masses India category. Now you do know the Maruti 800 as a people's car but there are plenty of more cars that were popular with the masses in India. Let's take a look. Showcasing a fine 1930s Ford Model A in its original condition, a 1932 model of the Austin 7 which was Britain's version of the first people's car and a popular Morris 8 Series 8. But the ones that caught our attention were models made in India by Indian manufacturers. A 1946 model of the Hindustan 10 that was the very first model to be launched by an Indian manufacturer after the Second World War, leading to Hindustan Motors becoming India's leading car manufacturer back then. Followed a decade later by the iconic Fiat 1100 103E that made India swoon over its looks, roomy cabin and economical running. Over two decades later, India's first perfect family car, a first for many Indians, was offered in the Indian market, the Maruti 800. The one seen here is the very first model manufactured by India's most successful car maker. Last but not the least, built to be the world's cheapest car without compromising on engineering, the Tata Nano. We have had an automotive history, not just of Maharajas, but of everyday cars. We were blanked out for a number of years when we just had uh, Fiat's ambassadors and heralds. But then Maruti came in and brought a new revolution into India and automotive world. And uh, before that, there were some cars which were used by common people, were used by doctors, by everyday commute. And a lot of people had these cars which were the lowest price cars of that era. So we've collected the lowest price cars of the era and significantly the Nano is an outstanding example of that. Mr. Pratan Tata's vision and dream was to create a car for the people of India, and which he did. The Obra Concourse allows me to visit some spectacular machines right here in Udaipur, like this legendary BMW 328, which has been flown in specially from BMW's Munich Museum. Now, this has been the most successful sports car of the 1930s. On its debut outing at Nürburgring, it outlasted its supercharged rivals and then on, there was no stopping its racing DNA with the car bagging wins at multiple prestigious motor racing events like the Alpine Rally, Mille Miglia, RAC Rally and even came fifth overall and first in class in 24 hours of Le Mans in 1939. With only 464 production models ever made, this BMW 328 is one of the most sought after items on the collector's market today in the world. Take a look at this stunning Delahaye Roadster, a one-of-a-kind in the collector's world and also the only one in India today. In 1935, this car was built to potentially touch 160 kmph, which made it one of the fastest cars in the world. Incredible, isn't it? The veteran vintage category showcased some interesting two-wheeler marvels, the oldest dating back to 112 years. This 623cc Indian light twin could offer a maximum of 5 horsepower. Remember, this was back in 1912. At present, it is owned by Subodh Nath and has undergone yet another set of restoration, as you can imagine. It's also the recipient of the best of show at the Cartier Travel with Style Concourse in Mumbai back in 2013. Every 
entry on display by sheer virtue of being admired by all is a win in itself, the judges made their tough decision at the Obrai concourse to celebrate a few outstanding automobiles. The building is very nice. The men make a good, good job to prepare this bike. So I'm happy that that bike win everything. The bike is the best in the, the show today. In order for this beautiful Lagonda to win Best of Show, of course, first it had to win Best in its class, which it, it did. Now, a Lagonda in the day, in the 30s, was a fantastic combination of amazing engineering, a fast car, a car that could race, and also a beautiful coach-built automobile that you could really drive up in front of any luxury hotel and be very proud to get out of. So it's a combination of grace and pace. Lagonda has it all. Hope you enjoyed the sights and sounds from the inaugural Oberoi Concourse Delegance. We'll be back next week with an equally exciting show. Until then, drive and ride safe.